I, I honestly believe that there's problems from top to bottom. Unfortunately, I'm a believer that you can't sack. It's more difficult to sack six or seven players than it is one manager. If you think about Tottenham since they last won a trophy, um, we've had Tim Sherwood, Pochettino, Mourinho, uh, very short time, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo. Uh, there's, there's obviously a problem which is a lot deeper than just the manager. Now, right, if it's top to bottom, now what's going on at the top? What's Levy doing wrong? Well, I, either he's not spending enough, and, and it's very difficult for me, who is incredibly poor compared to him, to say you should be spending more. But maybe when you compare it to the other teams that are spending huge sums of money, I'm not including Arsenal in that, by the way, um, but when you're looking at your Manchester City, your Liverpool's, your Chelsea's, uh, even now it's going to be soon, you're going to be mentioning Newcastle as well. And unfortunately, this isn't just a sport anymore, it's a business, and you've got to be spending a lot of money. And I just don't believe that they're spending enough money. Do you think it's down to that, Simon? A lot of their problems? Oh, I think und undoubtedly. If you look at the, the time that Daniel Levy's been in situ at Spurs, which is 20-odd years, and you look at the three sides that have dominated the Premier League and league wins, Man United, Man City and Chelsea. Look at the spend they've spent. And they're, OK, Leicester is the one that comes out of the pack, and Liverpool took an inordinate amount of time to win a, uh, a Premier League. Yeah. But actually, Man United, Man City and Chelsea probably ac account for 80% of the Premier League wins in that 20-year period. What have they spent in comparison? Right, and that's what's frustrating yeah. you, Adrian. Yeah, well, very much so. But also, let me ask you, um, and you know more about this than me, these uh, sporting directors, who is it nowadays who actually pick the players that join the club, as opposed, as opposed to in the old days when the manager was always the person who said, I want this player, and that's who you would go for. I think there's a problem there as well. Well, it's looked like that, hasn't it, Jim? Because a couple yeah. of the signings, I think Spence has gone out on loan now as well, hasn't he? And there was a, another player they brought in. Didn't look like... Adrian, you go to the games. So when you're watching the game, I assume you go to the games, do you feel it's convincing when you're watching the home matches? Do you, does this, is there something missing? Because obviously this sort of the pragmatic approach from the managers seemed to be annoying the fans. Or were you kind of like, OK, if we get the results, I'll put up with uh, what I'm seeing on the pitch? Firstly, I don't have a season ticket. I don't go to the games. I do watch them on TV when I can. And um, unfortunately, a lot of the time, I honestly believe, I think to myself, how on earth did we win this game? You know, whichever <laughs> game it is that we won. You know, it's, it's incredible. And it, it's very difficult. And I, I honestly think that you've got to start from the top and work all your way down. It's not just one person that's causing this problem. It's not just Levy. Anyone who wants to say this is Daniel Levy's fault is wrong. Okay, Anyone you think there's a whole bunch of things. Adrian, listen, thanks for the call. Josh, what's your take on a big Spurs fan? Good morning. Hello, chaps. Yeah, I just want to speak more, more about the club in general Yeah. Um, rather than speak about Conte because Levy, Levy's statement last night sort of says it all. Um, we've got a fight on our hands to get a Champions League place, which um, just tells us where we are as a club, really. Well, I mean, you, you, I, I, I would agree with that. You do have a fight in your hands. But, Josh, in the meantime, questions remain to be asked. Stellini and Mason in until the end of the season. Is that the right move if they're going to dispense with Conte at this stage? Well, who knows? I just think it's, I think it's stupid because four managers in four years, um, Poch, since Poch anyway, um, two zero one is Jose and Conte. Um, I think whoever comes in as manager... We're going to have this same problem in 18 months' time again. So, And what is the problem? The problem is Daniel Levy, because, because we're not getting anywhere as a club going forward. I mean, Simon, you're shaking your head at that, but you just do not accept that. No, I accept that the, the, that the Spurs fans have to have someone to blame for the inability to win on the pitch. And of course, at the end of the day, the buck will stop at the guy at the top. Yeah. But then you look down the list does and it say... Though? Does it, though? Does it, doesn't seem to, does it? Well, of course it does. Daniel Levy's been there for 20 years and has got... Well, what have yeah. they won in 20 years? But Dan Daniel has got a, an endless Should he not barrage. just step aside at this point now and, and do say what? maybe this is I a mean, on one, on one hand, we have people to suggest that Daniel runs a very successful football club in economic terms. On another hand, we say he's a very good negotiator, does the best transfer deals, gets players in at the right price, sells players at the biggest prices, which is part and parcel of a chairman's job. We look at Man United that have spent billions over the last... They haven't won a Premier League for a decade. No, but they've won trophies, haven't they? Sure, fine. And we're now, look, we're now looking at Spurs and saying, OK... 
being in the Champions League is a crime. Your manager, Arsene Wenger, towards the back end of his career, traded on that currency of saying, I'm getting Arsenal into the Champions League season upon season upon season. That's but Tottenham you. Hotspot do it, and I know they've won FA Cups. Well, that's what, because he did it for 19 times. And that's not a problem, but what we're talking about is, suppose they've done it seven times. But Man United have cracked it now, Simon. Tottenham tried to crack it with Pochettino, looks as if they had. Have they? Ended yeah. up by not... Well, with well, ten well, they're cracked, on the right they? journey. With the right guy. Well, they're well, on the yeah, right but, journey. But they haven't cracked it yet, have they? No, they haven't cracked it. Well, they're it. in the ascendancy, Martin. Yeah. Goodness they're, me. They're on the right they they, they, they feel it. they've got the right yeah. guy. They're, on the, they they're on the right journey. Well, the Premier League's a barometer, isn't it? So let's look at the, the where they are in the Premier League. Well, let's do, but, but not to Spurs fans. Well in that, Spurs fans. Spurs fans would happily finish in the bottom six if they won the League Cup, apparently. They'd be happy to finish in the bottom six if they won the FA Cup. It's just silly nonsense. Mm. And, and and I do think that, you know, ultimately Tottenham Hotspur should do more, but I just don't see what this constant barrage of abuse levied at Daniel Levy is really going to achieve or is based upon. It's just based upon not having won anything since 2008. Well, most teams in the Premier League haven't won anything for 2008. Spurs don't have a God-given right. They've, they won the double in 1961. They won the FA Cup in 1981, 1982. But they haven't, and 1991, but they haven't exactly set English football alight, have they? No, they have not. I think Conte, they we, have not. If, we, if we look, we must go back to his final say at the club, and I think he has a go at the players, most of all. He's coming for the players, not necessarily Daniel Levy, because he probably feels he has been supported this year, Jim. Do you think but, he's right to have done that? <clears throat> I think it's very interesting. Um, Do you think Ho- he was right? Hoiberg said he needed to be more detailed, he needed to be more specific on which players he was he was having a go at. I think that's right and proper. But that's what can happen, Jim. And I think it's about uh, honest discussion sometimes helps. That's why I would like to have seen him stayed, to see what he could but he build upon But he wasn't interested. If you have an honest discussion, if you've got a real issue with the players, right, surely you as a player person would advocate for this. He would be doing that offline. He he he! Forget whether he went after the boardroom. I'm pretty certain he said all this to their he faces, bro- though. Well, he's not he's not someone who's going to just talk to through to the players. I'm not sure through the media. I'm not sure that the motivation was as pure as you think it was. I think the motivation was simply I don't want to be here, so I'll say anything I possibly can, short of telling Daniel Levy he's left. Well, then he'd just, he'd just I want to leave. He'd have just walked though, wouldn't he, Simon? Huh? He'd have just walked. No, da- he? because then, he had that conscious because, of because, mind because that he wanted what, to improve then, things. But as then he what left. happens, Martin? Is he gives up three and a half million quid, and you know football people. As well as I do. So how do he you know, he's not, that how do we know he's not done that already? So, well, so it's well, a compromise Because, deal, because I'm pretty sure that they were negotiating an outcome. And ultimately, what my advice would have been to Daniel, and was, sack him. And you go after him, and then go after him for exactly damages. Simon, every- <clears throat> First fan, David's uh, probably running up his phone bill because he's called in from Australia. David, how are you? Uh, what's your take on this from distance? What are you watching here? Yeah, well, I'm, I've been uh, supporting Tottenham uh, 45 years now. My family's been going since 1938. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I understand that Simon wants to defend Daniel Levy. Uh, and it's not all one way, but the buck stops with Mr. Levy. He has the footballing credibility to run footballing operations, which is what the chairman of a club is about, of a Doug Ellis or a Peter Swales back in the day. You look at the fact that he's gone for Mourinho, he went for Conte, we all know how these things end. So you've got them for about two years and you hope to pick up a trophy. Therefore, you back the manager with what they want. Mourinho wanted Skriniar. He got Gareth Bale back. He didn't want him. Levy did. And he got Joe Rodon, who's now on loan in France. And then this question about Conte being back, uh, not one centre-back on a permanent basis was signed in the free transfer windows. The Romero deal was part of the finishing up at the time that Nuno was the manager. You had Clement Longley, who couldn't get into an awful Barcelona team. And we were crying out for one decent centre-back in the window, the way that we play in the, in the summer window. And then if you look at Conte in the way he plays, with Milan, he played a 3-5-2. Here, he was playing 3-4-3. Therefore, as Martin said before, yes, the, the, uh, the need to have decent wing-backs in place. And going out and spending 18 million quid with protracted negotiations, weeks on end for Judd Spence, who quite clearly Conte did not want, and then we wait till January the 31st to get Porro in, it sums up the whole thing. So you look at the track record of 22 years, you look at the appointments he's made as directors of football and as managers of that team, and more often than not, he has got it wrong. Where he got it right with Poch, is when you had Paul Mitchell there as the, as the director of football, working with Poch. They worked together at the Saints. But then because they didn't want to get back soil, they didn't want to pay the money, Mitchell uh, left. He couldn't work with Daniel Levy anymore. And I look at the club now, 
And I look at who is there to challenge Mr. Levy in the, his way of thinking that footballing matters. You've seen a whole host of people leave that club over the years. Um, and as a Spurs fan, you know, I try and get over once or twice a year. Um, I contribute to the Cheese Room YouTube channel, which is 8 o'clock <laughs> tonight, London time, and the podcast. Right. And I look at it and I'm very concerned. David, just a <clears throat> question for you, David, as an Arsenal fan, yes, player. Yes. Pochettino, yes. was he allowed to leave too early? You, he, he was almost the perfect manager, wasn't he? Tapping into the youth team, developing players. Do, were you in agreement when he left? Did you think it had come to an end of an era? Or should they have stuck with him? I, I think it, look, it was a mixture of things. I think it was right that he, that he went when he did. Would you like him to go back? Two finals. No. There's a real deification of Maurizio Pochettino at the moment. And I get that because he, for those who started in the sugar era, he's the best manager that has ever been. For an old person like me who remembers you, Martin, your first thing at Arsenal under Don Howe, Goodness. that's how old I am. Yes, exactly. You don't sound it. That, you know, I, thank you. This is Australian weather. Um, it's, uh, you know, my, my time was when we, my first season when we got relegated. And then Berkenshaw, Ardiles via two FA Cups and the UEFA Cup in three years. I was spoiled at a relatively young age. Wow, what a very good call. I've got to say to you, David, just before we were going to hit a break, but what a very good call from you. David, finish this for me. Is it a club that's gone forward, backwards, or have they found a level? Uh, I think if they, it, they, the level that Daniel Levy wants is Champions League qualification, and that's it. That's what he wants. What we want is, look, you know, I, I get the argument that Simon makes about Chelsea, about Man City and things like that, but I look at Liverpool, and that's the model that we could be. Where yeah. at, up to about a year ago, we had the Fenway group, Michael Edwards, Clark, all aligned. They sold really well, and they bought really well. And they got success, the most success they've had in 20, 30 years. What a good so call. David, where are you coming from? Down. Where are you speaking thank to you. us from? Uh, Sydney, Australia. Well done. David, thank you. All that distance, but all those good points, were they not? But he's absolutely right. And, 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 I, and I made <clears> the point the other day that the key component to Daniel being able to bridge the gap between achieving something was the managerial point. And if he'd have got Klopp, a different dynamic and the reasons why Liverpool kicked on was because Klopp was able to get £142 million for Coutinho and use it to buy a centre-back and a goalkeeper that enabled them to capitalise on the fortune of getting Mohamed Salah at, for a very small price mm. and build upon it yeah. and that's the difference OK David thank you for that telling us that, as it is all the way from down under Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.